Hey guys, welcome to Skyrim mods for the PlayStation 4 and I'm Crow Angel Gaming. Uh, basically, if I could just do, as I normally do, a quick shout out to the, the channel. Uh, if anyone is watching this and you like the content, please give the video a like. Likewise, with any of the video content that you see on the channel on a weekly basis, as you know, I upload on Monday, Wednesday and Friday, Friday being the busiest of the days. Because not only do I have to upload the regular gameplay videos which I've put together, but I also have to put out the other stuff as well, like the uh, basically the what mods reviews and everything else. Uh, I've actually done a little bit of research into when we can expect to have the Skyrim uh, Creation Club mods. <clears throat> As you know, last week I put out the first of the Fallout ones. Uh, what I didn't know then is actually this is just a basically a cosmetic launch. Uh, they haven't actually cleared any of the other mods just yet, so those mods will be coming soon. Likewise, once they start doing that, we are probably going to start then getting the Skyrim one as well. Expect, excuse me, expect when we first get the Skyrim Creation Club mods to basically be what we've had from Fallout mods, uh, Fallout Creation Club mods uh, for the last two weeks. Uh, since well since launch anyway uh, and that's basically a bunch of generic stuff uh, put in there you'll probably get some bows which you already recognize or shields and stuff I uh, I've seen a couple of different stuff floating about but uh, they basically look like the stuff that you already get in games just with special modifications put on them or enchantments so don't expect to see a massive amount of stuff within the first couple of weeks of the creation club mods for Skyrim going live but hopefully then as the weeks go on you'll actually notice more and more different stuff coming through same with the fallout mods anyway uh, with that out of the way again please check out the other stuff on my channel and i greatly appreciate any and all support you can, you can actually give share my videos onto your facebook's or uh, whatever social media you've actually got help me spread the word and uh <clears throat> I just recently went past uh, the 300 mark on the subscriber count, so thank you very much to everybody who has sub subscribed, whether you're a GTA fan, whether you're a Dragon Age fan, whether you're a Fallout fan, or whether you're here just for Skyrim and, and, and Death Mods only. Thank you very much to everybody who does tune in on a weekly basis, and uh, it does mean an awful lot to me, more than I can possibly say, so thank you very much. Please continue to support, help the channel spread and grow and if anyone has any other basically tips and ideas on how i can actually get out there more uh, i do have a facebook page for this uh for you know, for crow angel gaming if you do want to check it out it is uh basically uh, just go on to your facebook and type in crow angel gaming and you'll get it no problem or if you type in www dot uh, facebook.com slash crow angel gaming one word and you'll be able to find it please put a like on the facebook page as well and then you'll be notified whenever i do upload anything or uh, whenever i have any announcements uh, i'm going to start doing a lot more live streams now uh, first of all it was a confidence thing because as some people know i do have a speech impediment or a stutter depending on what you want to actually call it uh, basically, when I try to rush or if I'm nervous about anything, my words get all jumbled up. Or if I'm not confident in what I'm actually saying sometimes as well, it happens. But uh, I want to push past that. I want to show that people with minor disabilities sort of thing can actually not be held back by them. So if you support that, if you want to help that, then please help me get this channel out there. Let me be... I don't want to say an inspiration to people, but I just don't want to be held back by something that I can't help sometimes. So, with uh, without further ado, and sorry I've waffled on. Uh, thank you to everyone who's tuning in, and I will let's go. I will basically uh, get off now, and we'll start with the latest mods. And hey, Ash, uh, I <laughs> just saw you, you comment that down there. Uh, so, okay, so. Uh, moving on with the first of the mods t today that we'll be covering, uh, which is Mounting View Lodge. Uh, this basically adds a custom player home to the mounting above Mehun's Mehun's altar. Uh, it's a vanilla half fire home, 
uh, with some changes. He added uh, class specific armor, his rogue warrior, to both wings and the mage's room behind the main hall. Uh, there's a crafting room with enough materials to get alchemy, enchanting, smithing up to level 100 and so on and so forth. And yeah, Ash, uh, if you're still uh, watching tonight, uh, we'll be doing the uh, the Pacific Standard uh, bank heist on GTA, hopefully, providing everyone's on. <coughs> uh, in case anyone doesn't follow our GTA stuff, Ashley, uh, who's actually commented there, is one of my... Uh, Bob main mates on a uh, on that, and uh, if you've ever seen any of our funny moments, then more often than not, it is just myself and him <laughs> just pissing about. <clears throat> <It's tired. laughs> uh, anyway, uh, go moving on to the next mod to do. <laughs> if I do, <laughs> you do uh, realize that uh, 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 Ava likes or someone's. Probably can actually see that, and you'll see you gurring at him. Gurring at him. Uh, right, Midden Expanded, a quality dungeon and house mod that greatly expands the College Midden. Uh, with oh, okay, yeah, I know what this is. It's basically underneath the College of Winter Hold, and it just expands it a little bit, and makes it a bit more interesting. And so here, delve into the immersive new dungeons beneath the College of Winter Hold and the Sea of Ghosts. Uncover the secret history of the College of Winter Hold through new quests and adventures, law friendly and carefully integrated. Uh, integrated into existing areas, characters and histories. Challenging gameplay with two hours uh, that rewards exploration, puzzle solving and determination. New balanced weapons and armor, fully nav meshed, optimized and hand cleaned with test five edit. Okay. Oh yeah, this the old scrolls. I keep forgetting that. Right, Magic's Combat Gold Inflation. Okay. Uh, tired of having 100,000 plus gold with nothing to spend it on? Well, I am. So, a change the value of housing prices and upgrades. Why would you do that, you idiot? Uh, Hearthfire Shrines uh, expanded, Stealthy Wolf. And uh, this one expanded by what? Hearthfire Shrines expanded uh, adds five missing shrines to the Hearthfire homes. Nocturnal, normally found in the Ragged Flagon of the Feast Guild. Uh, Oriel, normally found in Dark Fall Cave and the Inner Sanctum for Dawn Guard. And okay, so yeah, it basically adds all the statues that you can find uh, in a bunch of different places. Okay, don't really know what that is on that bit, but. Uh, Dawn Star Supreme, uh, Dawn Star Overhaul mod. I'm not going to spend too much time on these because you all know what they are. It basically just improves the look of everything that is in the city. Uh, summonable Spriggans. Straightforward. Great realism overhaul, been over this number of times. Again, as I've mentioned on the Fallout mods, uh, better for what I say hi if I'm doing a video more. Make sure you like and subscribe. See <laughs> you in a bit, mate. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the Great Realism Overhaul. Uh, the reason this keeps popping up, and it's something I've only really come to uh, know is the fact that uh, whenever a mod is actually updated and there's a upgrade to it as you'll see on this he hasn't really put what the upgrade is proper on it but uh, whenever a mod is actually upgraded it gets resubmitted into the latest mods so uh, that's why you see a lot of the, the same mods popping up time and time again it's basically the author who created them has uh, worked on them upgraded updated them and then submitted them back to the uh, the channel if you've got the mod usually all you gotta do is click on the updates and it'll just update it without any major issues that i've had anyway uh time scale six uh you need to start a new game for this to work unfortunately the time scale being stored in your saves uh, making it work in old saves would require a script, which unfortunately you can't do at the moment, uh, which would be an external asset. External assets cannot be used for mods on PlayStation 4 because Sony are, for lack of better word, it starts with a C word and it ends in a T and there's only four letters. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this mod sets the time scale to 6 instead of 20. Uh, its default time scale is 20, meaning that 1 hour in real life equals 20 hours in game. Setting the time scale to 6 means that 1 hour in real life equals 6 hours in game. Uh, several quests that 
but use this value but do not modify it you shouldn't experience any problems when using this mod uh, Skyforge grindstones no weapon tempering this mod replaces the weapon sharpening tempering function of all grindstones instead grindstones will activate the functionality of the white run Skyforge menu. Uh, this greatly affects weapon balance for players. Use it only uh, if you want a challenge. Uh, it will let you forge Skyforge items anywhere, but fits better with mods like Smilleradon. 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 Uh, just a different one. I can't open that, unfortunately. Uh, okay, Daedric Silence. Uh, Again, don't fall prey to the fact that this is an armor mod like some people did and I have to actually check this out now and it is not an armor mod. Uh, the armor you can see in this screenshot is actually from an Xbox or PC version. Uh, this is obviously would break the external assets and clothing type mods like that unfortunately don't exist on the PlayStation 4 which is a pain and I utter again Sony are cunts for lack of a better word. Uh, this basically is the effect that you can see going on right there. The s s smoke effect. Uh, and I did cover this last week in some of the black mod sections. It did come up in the environmental mods or one of them type of mods that I, I was actually doing back then. Uh, so yeah, if you're going to download this based on the screenshot, you're going to be very disappointed, unfortunately. It is basically just a, a aura effect, uh, so don't fall prey to it. Uh, Daedric Whisper again, this is similar to that one, it just gives you a different aura effect, as you can see on that one. It's instead of a pure black one, you've just got a smoky effect instead. And Divine Silence again, same type of thing. Instead of having that, you just basically get that all the time. And again, if you want the more smokier version of an aura, it's that one. Uh, fortified starting skills. Uh, racial bonuses are now a 45 effect rather than starting at a higher level. This means one race's skill bonuses will always be better than another race without the same bonus. A Nord's two-handed skill will always be buffed 10 points higher than an Argonian's two-handed skill, for example. Skills will no longer all cap at 100 for all races with 45 effect. Racial skill bonuses can go over 100. Uh, the racial skill bonus are the same as vanilla. It will probably make additional versions that reflect Oblivion and Morrowind. Uh, skill bonus is the best you can be translated. So there you go. Yeah, as you can see down there, the things do now actually go over 100. Uh, test mod, okay. Boneyard bug. Please be advised this mod only works if installed before entering the Soul Cairn for the first time with Serana. Okay, so... This little mod opens the box with the scroll in it, allowing the player access in the case you get the bug that Valerica won't follow the player into the scroll area. If you have our increased population, this then? If you have our increased population, this fix is built into that mod, okay. Uh, Borderlands of Skyrim, again, it's an updated mod, but uh, it's nothing really new. It basically opens up the Borderland areas where you, you normally get those little gateways. As soon as you, you go past it, you can't really run anymore. You just seem to be running on the spot. Uh, this basically adds five new areas and I think it's five bosses as well uh, to each of those areas. And there isn't much really else to actually say other than that. It does add map markers as well. Uh, an orc, Nord, Khajiit, Argonian, walk into a bar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'd start coming to that joke in my head before I'd even uh, finish reading it. And then it's got a, a wood elf walk into a bar. They all say ouch as they do so. Sadly, this mod suffers from the purple face glitch. Okay. Uh, Skyrim restored. Okay, restores a lot of missed content. Uh, Frames per second performance, towns, uh, tweaks, I think this is, yeah. Uh, 
if you're having any frames per second where your character is slowing down and getting major lag, this improves it for Solitude, White Run, Windhelm, Riften, and Markov. So if you have got just the Riften Improver one, you might want to consider downloading this one instead, instead of at least that way you've got several improvement mods in one. Uh, Blood Moon Land of the Werewolves is a little mini quest mod. Again, this one's just been recently updated, hence why it is appearing back in the later section. Uh, I wouldn't really count too much on that balloon being part of the game, though. Uh, new, uh, new lore friendly mod about werewolves and skull hunters war in Solsheim. New locations and new furniture and equipment related. Uh, New, meet new people and discover about the Blood Moon Prophecy. Build, uh, prepare yourself for a war between the Skull Hunters and the Werebeast. Uh, the quests are no longer supported, so NPCs are law friendly. Visit the many new locations in Solstheim to explore. Okay. Ygritte, the Wildling Follower. <laughs> okay, yeah, I know what they're doing with this. Uh, it's supposed to be based on the Game of Thrones character. I see what they've done with it. It's pretty clever, I must admit. Uh, for those people who are interested as well, it's been passed back and forth while we're on this thing, which makes the most sense to do a segue. Uh, for those people who have been following the gaming community news, uh, it's rumoured and it's strongly rumoured at the moment that Bethesda have acquired the licence to do a Game of Thrones game. If, and only if this is so, I will be purchasing, I will be doing gameplay, and I will be reviewing the shit out of it. Because I am uh, a closet Game of Thrones fan. Uh, obviously by the fact that I like Dragon Age and uh, Skyrim and other similar type of games as well. So yeah, if uh, if there is uh, the ability to make uh, to actually play the Game of Thrones game, uh, I'm not interested in the Telltale game series one. I took a look at it and I weren't interested. There was another game that came out, I think, uh, by another publisher, and I just really wasn't interested in that one either. But if Bethesda are gonna make a Game of Thrones game, I've actually seen other gameplay videos on MXR and other people out there. And uh, they've actually do uh, downloaded, I can't remember if it was for this or if it was for uh, Oblivion, but there was some uh, Game of Thrones mods for Skyrim, I'm pretty sure it was for Skyrim, in which it basically changed the, these are like PC mod mods, and by the way, uh, this is before Xbox received mods as well so this is like how far back i've been following it uh basically when it was on pc someone came up with like a mod and you probably heard of this so i do uh, apologize if you have heard about it, which basically renamed all of the holds into areas from sky uh, from game of thrones and it renamed key characters into characters from the game of thrones as well uh, this was out probably when about the second season of Game of Thrones was out, so it, had, it is a pretty old mod. But anyway, yeah, uh, I w it was one of the mods that I really wanted to play, and unfortunately I was really gutted when they didn't actually come up with it, and what should I say, when Sony disallowed a lot of the different mods uh, for the PlayStation 4. I mean, I go on about the fact that I always wanted the Sophia mod and stuff, that's just for me own stupid interest because I just found it absolutely hilarious that you could have a, uh, a fairly sexy looking girl who just got pissed all the time and walked around and followed you into to, to a battle. I also, uh, I, I don't know her personally, but I communicate a, a, a hell lot with uh, what's called uh, the girl who actually is the uh, voice actress on that. And it's what's called, she's just as much peed off as like anybody that her, her but basically her voiced creation isn't actually being allowed to come on the playstation 4 so yeah uh because we're not getting that because we're not getting the game of thrones one for a long time i was seriously tempted to move over to xbox but at the end of the day i have two kids and i'm not going to move over to uh, another console just because of two games 
I mean, even if we never get mods I, in future versions of the game, uh, it's just something I'm going to have to live with, unfortunately. I want to do good for the channel, but as well, the PlayStation 4 offers me a lot better video editing software type thing without having to do it all through the bloody PC. So at least I can get my games put out pretty much straight away. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> uh, this mod adds, you can hear, you get the Wild Wing follower to the Wind Peak Inn located in Dawnstar. Anyway, there you go. Void Magic is the next one by Kion49. He usually does a pretty good uh, bunch of mods. So uh, this mod adds new magic, seven types are, uh, since Void Spell has the property of fire. Damage rise, huh? damage rise like Firebolt, etc. Damage is reduced by magic resist. These magic will temporarily bring down the opponent's armor rate as well. With Staff Enchanter, you can re uh, you can create four staff and three ones. In order to create these, you need to, you need the master spell. Uh, it is the same as the basic system. Uh, where is it located? In White Run's uh, Dragon's Reach, uh, uh, White Run, well, White Run's Dragon's Reach has a merchant. Uh, many of the magic mods always Dragon's Reach puts the uh, merchant and items. I wonder why. <laughs> Dance Wizarding Wands. So yeah, if you want to use wands instead of uh, sta uh, staves or staffs, then it's another one good one for you. Uh, TLS Just Rift and Ultimate. Ultimate version disables a lot of landscape outside town to provide a little more frames per second. You can combine this with town mod he has made to put it in low. Okay, marry me Cicero, straightforward really. Uh, improved class archetype immersion via rings, okay. Uh, this mod adds three rings to the start of the game to enhance gameplay for thieves, archers uh, or destruction mages. Uh, they're designed to offer a quick start option based on classic character archetypes. So there you go. Uh, Elk Fork Lodge, and doesn't really stop, there's a screenshot for it. Pretty basic, but uh, a, a new player home located to the north of Half Moon Mill. Uh, nav mesh not included at this time. Uh, Telmos. A small house is in mixed Worma and Telvani style. Uh, Telmos is located near Hildrun's tomb on the way to Iverstead. Uh, look for the map marker when you start the game. Pretty straightforward. Uh, Fendrick Six Magic World. Okay, been over that a few times. Four Shields Tavern Overhaul. Fantasy Followers. Uh, simple creature followers. Fury, the faint flame archonoc. Felgro Keep, uh, Darkshade, the Necro Priest in Sky Temple Ruins, uh, Des Armit, the Mini Dragon, Bonestrew, Bonestrew Crest, okay, uh, Data, the Dwerma Spider, uh, Deep Folk Crossing, Gwarp, the Spider in Sleeping Tree Camp, Ixlix, uh, the Spriggan in Clear Pine Pond, Windy, the Wisp in the uh, Frost Flow Lighthouse. Uh, Raph the Wolf. Uh, some Nord Puzzle Ruins west of White Run. There is a map marker though. Uh, interiors. Uh, okay, there's a whole bunch of other stuff on here. So yeah, adds a bunch of different followers which you might want to uh, download. God, how many times? Uh, Dreamweaver, Ports of Call. Let's go on, I'll give it another go. Uh, so you can actually see it for the hundredth time. Uh, concepts, interior, static detail, lore and actors by Treehawk and uh, some other stuff by Mecha Ghost as well. Mecha Ghost, by the way, is one of the ones I will proudly say that he does some of the best content for the PlayStation 4. So if you ever see his name on something, you can pretty much be assured that there is going to be quality behind it. Uh, so yeah, you've got uh, the, the creative talents here of Treehawk, Mecha Ghost and KM49. Uh, KM49 again, like I said before, does some quality stuff as well. To be honest, Treehawk I've not really seen much of uh, in all the, video, the stuff I come across, whether I just don't notice his name and it's something, I don't know, but Mecha Ghost and KM for definite usually do some pretty damn good work. Uh, this you play there. 
Unique player residence was designed and constructed specifically for use on the PlayStation 4 and uses no external assets or scripts, but provides some groundbreaking player home features that have never been seen before on the PlayStation 4. Rich with immersion, storyline history, and deep ongoing lore. The Dreamweaver is far more than just formidable and luxury, luxurious home from the new Black Orchard Guildmaster as a well-armed galleon. Its owner can safely sail, dock to and disembark from three different mooring ports in Skyrim. Uh, there is a mooring at Skyrim, uh, at Solitude, sorry, one at Windhelm and one at Raven Rock, Solstein. Or you can step out onto the deck while the ship's at sea between ports. Alright, that's one thing I've, I've, I've been going through that must have been added because I've never noticed that before that you could actually step up on deck and basically sail whilst you're doing it. So for those people who want to have a pirate ship that you can travel about on, and there you go. Perfect for the no fast travel kind of play, state, play style. Uh, forward, that's Japan, um, for Japanese unfortunately. I, uh, it will appear in code. Yeah. <clears throat> White Run Player Home. Straightforward. Player scale. Uh, 1.2. This mod changed the player's scale to 1.2, meaning the player is 20% uh, larger than they would normally be. Uh, again, different swarm increases it by 1.15. Uh, 1.1. 1 1.5. Shorter, so that one would be 95. Uh, increase or decrease by 9, 85, 8. Time scale 1. We've learned across that before, it just basically alters the time scale. Uh, Fin Barretta or something like that. Retreat. Dark hot, dark, darker hot spring. Okay. Uh, in the mountains of the uh, in the mountains to the east of Windhelm, uh, from the stables of Windhelm, follow the road east towards Brandymug, uh, Brandymug Farm and leave it behind. Onwards past Hulala Farm and Hollyfrost Farm, past Traitor's Post. When you reach Refugee's Rest, the crumbling snow-covered tower, you're almost there. Turn southeast. Oh, I can only just put a map marker because that would have been so much easier. Anyway, it has an anvil, smelter, grind wheel, top workbench, tanning rack, alchemy wrap, enchanting uh, cooking pot, oven, outside it's got a wood chopping block and a grain mill, basically all the stuff that you would get in a half fire home and inside it looks pretty strange. Uh, there's a lot of storage available, all named uh, in a way you tend to store a lot of his items in enough containers and blah 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 blah. Okay. But don't, don't forget, don't store your items because I said all containers are safe for storage with the two exceptions in the kitchen and so so forth. But Nothing is ever safe, and I say this time and time again, if you're going to risk uh, saving any of your stuff in... <clears throat> if you're going to risk storing any of your items in the chests within a modded created home, then if there's ever an update to the mod or the author decides to remove the mod because they want some more space or whatever reason, then you're going to lose everything, unfortunately. Vampire Knights, uh, Divine Springs, Stealth, Sprinting, sorry. Uh, have you ever wanted to run like a divine being and so this is the mod for you? Now you can run like Hermes himself, uh, you have a massive stamina regain while sprinting and should never tire. So if you want to race anyone, you can do it in the divine way. This is a simple tweak, I hope you enjoy it, blah blah blah. Okay, Taller Bretons. Uh, level 1 mod, okay. Wolf HD Gaming Fantasy Follower. The time has come, Fumper demands to become High King, but he needs more, he needs proper training from the Dragonborn. Take him on your lead. Show him Tamriel, make him the, make him the High King that the people of Skyrim need, and do not ever, ever, ever call him Fluffy. Fumper is at the entrance to Riverwood. <clears throat> Assassins need parkour projects, just encourages more climbing. Uh, populated Hajimuch Hall, a populated Winstad Manor, populated Lakeview Manor. Okay, these are the homes that you can get from Hearthfire. Uh, do not install this mod until after the DLC homes are purchased and built. 
So there's your first warning right away. Digit Lords here uh, with Digit Lords here with a small add-on for for what? With a small add-on that we personally helped the experience and made things a tad easier. Added to the hard five sanctuary, five stationary guards, a blacksmith and merchant. Uh, help with small functionary mod helps your play style as it does ours. Okay, right. So I get what they've done. Really, they've just made it so you, you've got merchants and more people living at each of the three player homes that you can build from Hearthfire. Personal cheat mask, uh, magic redone. Vendrix the Archmage. Okay, we'll get that on over and over again. Jamora Thrall. Okay, can't do that one really. Uh, basic wizarding wands replace their staves and staffs. Uh, numerical tempering. Okay, <clears throat> what this mod does. Uh, this mod is not part of the existing mod if you're playing on PC. Right, so it just doesn't tell you anything really. Ultimate Blessing, PlayStation 4, all in one. Okay, that is definitely from a PC mod. Because that looks like the Princess Leia alpha. Uh, update now, this is all in one. What oh, is mod? Uh, what does this mode? This is all in one version. All blessings are in limited time, including Dragonborn and Dawnguard. Uh, request one guy wants me to be a vampire blessing limited two. I'm working on that, don't worry. Okay. Uh, business in Skyrim, PlayStation 4 version. Uh, unlimited shouts. Playable mages for the PlayStation 4. Uh, time scale, set time scale to 45. Miami Serana. Okay, I did cover this at the end of last week's video, but I definitely want to go over it again. Right, uh, for the longest time, many people have desired Serana, myself included. Uh, in fact, I have tried to do many uh, computer game playthroughs where uh, I tried different things before I finally uh, had the, the knowledge many, many, many years ago when it was on PlayStation 3 to look it up on Google, only to find that you could not actually marry her despite all the lovey dovey talk that you had going back and forth between her and uh, all the concern that you showed over her and her family and everything else. Right. I tried playing as a vampire, I tried playing as a human, and every single time you were shot down. Uh, and the only time that she ever did express any interest in you was when you were actually married to somebody else. And then uh, you got the option of uh, when she asked, do you have anybody special in your life? And you mentioned that you were married. It kind of like shot. It kind of like uh, uh, ruined everything. Right. There are several different mods out there. Uh, the main one uh, I want to mentioned so far is the one I've actually seen before is called Live with Serana. Uh, if you've currently got this mod and you want to actually marry Serana, you need to disable Live with Serana because it will severely mess things up. Uh, you can marry Serana after completing the quest line Kindred Judgment. So this, uh, what I'm going to do now is refer to the, uh, the text on this. Uh, when they actually say this is a simple mod, this mod just adds Serana to the vanilla marriage options. Uh, for a long time it didn't seem possible so I don't know how this one's been able to actually get through. Uh, in the same way that you marry other marryable NPCs. Uh, you can install this mod at any time, a new game save isn't required. The load order is wherever you want it to be. This mod won't be affected by the load order. He thinks. Uh, please remember to complete the quest Kindred Judgment before you marry her. So complete Kindred Judgment before you start on the uh, marriage thing. Okay. <clears throat> if you anytime you want to uninstall it, divorce Serana by using the mod Marriage or After Marriage End uh, to uninstall this uh, and uninstall then and then uninstall the Dutch mod. If you like to use another marryable Serana mod, remember that this mod needs to be uninstalled before installing a marryable Serana mod, which there isn't any, to be honest. Uh, Live with Serana doesn't actually count because you don't actually marry her. She just moves into your house. Uh, if you use the mod Live with Serana, uninstall it before installing this mod, as I said before. Right. 
The steps for actually marrying Serana. Uh, this is where you might want to write down your notes before you actually uh, start the thing. Obviously not write your notes as I'm actually telling you. I mean, if you're going to download this mod and try it out, make sure you write down all these notes beforehand because then you've got to keep going back and forth uh, between the, the two. Right, in order to marry Serana, uh, it's the same way that you would marry another marryable NPC. Complete the Dawn Guard quest, Kindred Judgment. Don't care whether you side with the Dawn Guard or the vampires, and whether Serana is a vampire or a mortal. Uh, have you already spoken to Marmol about marriage? If so, when you were the Amulet of Mara, talk to Serana and select the existing dialogue. Have you ever thought about marriage? If you select the dialogue for the first time, Serana will say that temples scare her. Excuse me. Uh, finish a dialogue with her and select the same dialogue again. Have you ever thought about marriage? The new dialogue will be showed after Sorana says, I think we've talked about that enough. Come on now. Uh, so then you should get the uh, the marry option after saying that. So don't be dissuaded if you actually get that and then you're thinking, okay, well, this hasn't actually worked. Uh, Serana is a special NPC that the, the vanilla spouse's AI can't be applied. Uh, this mod adds new spouse AI for her. Uh, she will go to <clears throat> she will go to outdoor in in she will go outdoor in the, the daytime when she lives in the player's house. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the other feature is after the marriage, Serana and your adopted children have a few r random conversations which hasn't really been available before if you have any problems with this mod uh, if the mod doesn't work uh, when you can't marry her place this mod at the end of the load order and try again <coughs> sorry I really need a drink uh, if you still can't marry her check the following things uh, if you have another mod active like live with Serana uninstall it have you defeated Harkon have you put on the amulet of Mara do other marryable, uh, sorry. Do other marryable NPCs mention your amulet of Mara? If not, speak to Marmor, uh, the guy in uh, Riften, uh, at the Temple of Mara, about marriage. Uh, so, in other words, if, if when you talk to other NPCs, do they actually say to you, "Is that an amulet of Mara?" So you're interested in marriage then, or you're looking for a partner then, or something like that. Uh, Right. Does Serana have a dialogue? Have you ever thought about marriage? Uh, so, in other words, if you've really pushed her to the point where uh, she's snapping at you all the time, then I'll probably you, this might not work, but it still might. You don't know. Uh, it doesn't really matter, by the way, if she's human or a vampire. So uh, you don't have to have you don't have to have turned her human for this to, to work. I will actually uh, say, I will be doing a mod showcase on this pretty soon before i'll probably do a mod showcase on this actually before i actually do my fresh skyrim uh, 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 playthrough as i've mentioned before i will be doing a skyrim restart playthrough once the creation club mods are up and running and there's some fairly decent ones actually on there at the moment as i said before the creation club mods aren't available yet for skyrim and there's nothing on google or anything else about when they're going to be brought out the fallout ones that are out at the moment are literally just basic uh, things that uh, bethesda have actually put out themselves uh kind of like they did when they first brought out the like normal mods they had some mods to start off with and then as the weeks go on they're going to put some other stuff in there Anyway, uh, going back to the Serana thing, does she have a dialogue if you ever thought about marriage? Uh, <clears throat> and uh, can you finish the wedding ceremony or does the when, uh, the ceremony start without issues? If not, can you finish the ceremony with another marriable NPC? So basically, if you have any problems trying to marry Serana, then try it with uh, some other uh, random one. If you have on the mod for marry all, this shouldn't be much of a problem. You could literally step outside the uh, the chapel, walk up to anybody uh, anybody you want outside of Riften or in uh, Riften, and you should be able to say to them, do you want to get married, and just uh, uh, go over there. If you can marry them, then you know it's a problem with the Serana mod. 
Right. Uh, if you have issues with number four, which is does Serana have the dialogue? Have you ever thought about marry, marriage? Uh, you might have to. Uh, you might have a mod that changes Serana's dialogue, or a mod that treats Serana as your spouse. Live with Serana is one such example, and changes her dialogue, so it needs to be uninstalled. If you have a problem, if you have issue if you have issue number five which is uh, can you finish the wedding ceremony or does the ceremony start without any issues uh then there may be a mod that changes the wedding ceremony or the vanilla game uh, the, the vanilla marriage system in the game uh this mod never changed the wedding ceremony nor the vanilla marriage system at least uh the conflict between mods is almost always very complicated and some of the mods leave effects even though they are uninstalled uh, but that pretty much has the same effect with the mods if you're going to be having uh, what is it uh, cosmetic mods where you can actually add facial presets into the game and uh, you don't necessarily need to have them on all the time you basically have the that mod on for the character creation process and then you can disable them, delete them uh, because the effects will be carried over once you save the game for the first time. So yeah, uh, so as he says on there, the it can then be uninstalled. Uh, so actually, he can't clearly say what causes mods, uh, what what causes the issues. If the mod never worked in your game amongst all the other mods, try using Live with Serana or any other marriage mod for Serana. Unfortunately, there is literally only those two that I actually both know of. So if this is something that you've been waiting for for like a long time, the ability to finally marry Serana, then uh, I, like I said, I will be trying this out to get a proper mod showcase done on it. And I'll be doing this before I start my fresh gameplay. I may use my male character. I may just use the default female character, which I use to showcase some of the other mods. I don't quite know yet. The female, I'd have to go through all of the uh, the Dawn Guard stuff just to actually go for it. So I'm thinking I might use the male character because I don't think he's actually married yet. Uh, at least I don't think he is anyway. Uh, so yeah, if uh, if it doesn't work out, you'll be the first to actually know about it. And I'll uh, whenever this mod comes up again in future, I'll be sure to. Uh, I'll be sure to actually mention that. Anyway, moving on, uh, we've got Black Reach Bypass, which is uh, this mod he made simply so he doesn't have to trudge through all Black Reach again just to get the Elder Scroll uh, countless times. Uh, he's made a journey into the deep and his current playthrough at this point to obtain the Elder Scroll, not this time, however. This mod is intended for players that get tired of going through Black Reach and not first time players of Skyrim. Blackreach needs to be experienced at least once before skipping it. Adds a lever switch that opens the gates of Mizark, uh, allowing quick access to the Elder Scroll. Uh, this mod also does not interfere with the quest which requires the Elder Scroll or the use uh, the use of the Dwemer machine holding the scroll. Tower of Mizark is, uh, is, a, is on map by default, Fast travel is now possible to reach the location. So you don't necessarily have to go all the way through. Sorry, you'll have to go through Black Reach the first time, but then it just makes it easier for you to get back there without having to keep going through the Black Reach over and over and over again, which is pretty expansive. Unless you're looking for the uh, red plant, red lyrian plant or something, whatever it's called. Uh, Nadia Shack, okay. A small shack south of Dragonbridge has an NPC both follow and marryable carrying powerful weapons. Unfortunately though, no screenshot. Uh, Fendrix Arcane Archery. So if you wanna if you like me and you like to use the bow and arrow a lot, this puts a bit more craftability into your is this craftability as well? Yeah, 72 new enchanted magical arrows and bolts, 12 arrow uh, bolt types, three variations of each type, normal, empowered, and legendary. Uh, found in vendors, NPCs, inventories, steel smithing, and cheat chests. Uh, these arrows can be bought from vendors, looted from enemies, and crafted at the forge. In addition, there is a cheat chest in Farangar's room in Dragon's Rage. Poor Farangar, he keeps getting dumped with all these chests and everything. Uh, containing 20,000 of the arrows, so I don't think you'll be running out of them anytime soon. 
New arrow bolt types, fire causes a fire explosion, frost causes an icy explosion, slows targets, lightning causes a shock explosion, uh, damages health and magicka, fear causes target to be struck with fear, paralysis causes the targets to be paralyzed, frenzy arrows causes targets to enter a state of frenzy, earth causes targets to be shaken on impact, damages health and stamina, darkness causes an explosion of darkness uh, to damage targets and weaken the fire resistance, Poison causes targets to be affected by long-lasting poison. Skeletal causes immense damage, but uh, summon skeletons that attack the archer. Water causes an explosion of water to damage targets and weaken their shock lightning resistance. Wind causes stagger knockback. Uh, the mod will increase the difficulty of the game due to NPCs being allowed to use their new magical arrows as well. Uh, etc. A high level bandit archer could shoot a legendary fire arrow at you and your companion with heavy damage you uh, both through an explosion and scorched fire. Uh, crafting guide, okay, this is a lot of stuff in there, but yeah, if you are interested in extra stuff for uh, arrows and stuff, then uh, there you go. Uh, Fendrix has also done one for the elemental fighter, unarmed martial, ma magical martial arts. And the demigod artifacts, uh, maximum health, stamina, carry weight. Okay, I know this is something that a lot of people are interested in. They tend to, if you're anything like me, you pick up a load of rubbish early on in the game. So it is nice to sometimes be able to get through a lot of the earlier levels, especially before you can increase your strength and other things like that with a minimalistic amount of trouble so uh, this by the looks of it will add oh I say uh, the, 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 the mod adds legendary amulet and ring that greatly empowers their wearer. The demigod amulet gives plus 100,000 health, stamina and carry weight. The demigod ring gives plus 100,000 health, stamina and carry weight. These new items can be found in a small chest on the table Farangar, again, room inside Dragon's Rage. The mod allows you to become a master of combat and effectively immune from any attack. Okay, put that one onto favourites. Uh, this guy is also off Fendrix, yeah. Uh, his other mods include Fendrix Magic Evolved, Magic uh, Sounds Improved, Twin Souls Expanded Levels, uh, Dread, Dread Thralls Overhaul, the Archmage Ring, the One Ring, and the Demigod Amulet. Okay, Fendrix Dragonborn Artifacts, no shout cooldowns. Fendrix Magic Evolved, the One Ring, these are the ones we've mentioned before. Clear. Okay, uh, a chick in Whiterun Castle carrying two overpowered weapons, Fallen's and Potential to Marry. Unfortunately, you never upload screenshots. So how the hell can you actually tell what she's like? She might be a complete and utter minger. Uh, Skyrim. Map Markers Light version. Uh, either use this Skyrim Map Markers Light version or the original Skyrim Map Markers version. Do not use both, otherwise, you will see all map markers for the mineral deposits too. Uh, Sarcastic Dragons Creation Club. Okay. Come one, come all to its creation club. Bethesda was doing it, so why not? Uh, what did you do this time? Uh, this makes this takes inspiration from Professor's brilliant idea. It adds the, an incredible rich merchant to the Riverwood Inn named Bethesda Maryland. Um, <laughs> Bethesda Maryland, yeah, I get it. Uh, he is, as I said, very rich, but he will try to sell you things that you'd normally get for free. <laughs> He's naked and it doesn't work. Uh, this is an interpretation of brilliant, Professor Brilliant Idea. It represents a shameless, effortless cash grab. I even left his inventory chest sitting in the corner so you can steal all 5, 000, uh, 50,000 septims from him. Uh, do you actually expect me to download this? No, that's the point. Uh, can you voice him and make him snarky? No, that would require effort and will defeat the purpose. <laughs> Anything else? Nope. I'm going, I was going to make a giant middle finger out like this, uh, out of like, uh, chairs or something, but that again would require effort. And besides, I'm already spitting in their faces a little, so don't want to push my luck much too much there. Okay, that's pretty funny. I get a bit of that. Wabberjack, the spell. Uh, vampire Lord Follower, Prince. So, okay, so you can have the Vampire Lord as a follower. 
Dark Shadow Arena, I've covered this before. Vampire Eyes and Overhaul basically restores the eyes to like a blood effect, which looks a lot better, I must admit, instead of the glowy effect. Enchanted Plus, Ultra Dragon Priest Mask, uh, Shades of Night Playable Vampire Race, Scardy Winter Goddess, God, how many times has this come up? Uh, container and NPC Loot Diversity. Uh, housing additions for the PlayStation 4, Divine Compilation, that's basically the one I was going over at the start of the video. Like I said, don't be don't be uh, convinced that this is a clothing mod, it's not, it's literally just the smoky aura that goes around you. Uh, Japanese version of Marry Me Serana, Merchant Death Prevention, uh, Monkfish Mage Cheats and Craftable, Divine Divine Disable, Disabled Auto in, okay. Archer starter ring with basic perks, uh, realistic destruction for damage effects, and that is it. Right, uh, it went on slightly longer than I think. Uh, I do apologise for the waffling in between. It's basically because if I, I want to provide my knowledge on stuff sometimes, and I, I, I don't just want this to be as someone said before me reading all the stuff that is on there. I want to provide some insights as well. So if you do appreciate that, then leave a like, because uh, I do need the support. Uh, thank you very much to everybody who has tuned in uh, throughout the course of the video. I know it's a pretty long video to try and actually sit through, so I do appreciate when people do sit all the way through to this. You get an imaginary cookie. <laughs> so anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'll see you next week with one of the categories. Don't ask me to remember which one it is because I have not got a clue. I seem to think we were somewhere near the environmental and foliage section, so you're probably going to get followers or gameplay or something like that. Okay, so thank you very much again. Thank you very much to everybody who, who, who has tuned in and thank you to everybody who supports the channel and is watching this on replay. Thank you and I will see you next week. Bye bye.